Hey everybody, Ken Hendricks from Home Instead Senior Care here. Thanks so much for joining me today. This week's episode is a little different. I've teamed up with a friend of mine, Melinda Joy Pattison, who's been a guest on this show before, to uh, join her on her show uh, that she's since launched, MJ Radio. You can find that on YouTube. The link will be in the description. But this is the interview that I had with her. We sat down last week. We talked about the upcoming End Alzheimer's New Mexico fundraiser that's going to be happening on Thursday the 24th in just a few days. We also uh, dove into subject matter that is uh, very fitting for her platform, being a licensed psychotherapist. We talked about mental health and coping and things of that nature. Hope you all enjoy and have a great week. Online event that is a variety show. We're calling it the End Alzheimer's New Mexico Variety Show. It's going to be on Thursday, September 24th in the evening at 7 p.m. So there's going to be comedy, music, uh, dance performance, and I'm having all sorts of fun going around and filming, you know, social distancing, of course, but filming flamenco dancers and hula dancers and comedians and just, uh, it's going to be a really special thing. I hope that a lot of people are able to log on. We can raise some awareness around Alzheimer's and dementia, how it affects New Mexicans in particular. And uh... All right. Welcome to MJ Radio. I'm Melinda Joy Pattison, your host. Every time you tune in, you'll hear interesting conversations with interesting people about interesting things. Today, I have with me my friend, Ken Hendricks, who's been on my show before in the M Melinda Joy Hour iteration on the real radio. And we've talked about his work with Home, and, Home Instead. I was looking at your t-shirt, Ken, and say, I was going to say, with Stay Home Instead. <laughs> <laughs> Double meaning. Yeah, that's what I get for that's what I get for looking in the middle of of talking. But um, anyway, welcome. It's so much fun always to talk with you, well, and it's even more fun now because we get to see each other, right? Yeah, yeah, very cool. Well, we did see each other when we were in the radio studio before COVID. You we know, right that's true. <laughs> but the that's audience, true. the that's audience, true. did you come both now. times? Were you in the studio both times? Um, you know what? Actually, you're right. The second time, I was just on the phone. So we have we have really evolved in this it's sort of together. Uh, it's it's really been sort of a very informal collaboration. You were on my show when I was in the radio studio and we were in the studio together the first time when we talked about how you came to do the work that you do. And then we were, the next time we talked on the phone because it was during, it was early in the COVID yeah. era. And then I've been on your show twice already. Yeah. Stay home instead, just like it says on your shirt. And that was just like this using Zoom. And People then you're like, do these guys talk to anybody else or do they just talk to each other all the time? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's so much fun. I mean, why not? Why not? Right. Yeah. Right. But the, the coolest thing is that being on your show gave me the courage to make the jump from radio to YouTube. And it is so much more fun. That's I'm what I tell everybody. It is so much more fun than being in the radio studio and having commercial breaks and having to do station identification. It's so much fun. I really love it. You're I free. Really it. You're, you're a free bird. You're flying out yeah. of YouTube land, <laughs> doing your show. I'm happy to be part of it. It's a little bit dangerous. <laughs> It's a little bit dangerous to cut me loose on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> so before we started, we were talking about this fundraiser that you're going to be doing. For, yeah, yeah. Um, it's for yeah. the Alzheimer's Association, uh, raising raising funds to contribute to the the fundraising around the walk to end Alzheimer's. So uh, a lot of a lot of nonprofits are 
um, you know, that do fundraisers like special walks and things like that. They're not really doing that because they can't gather together for those things during COVID. Um, and so the walk to end Alzheimer's is still happening. It's going to be on October 3rd this year, but it's happening everywhere. People are going to be able to log on and walk from wherever they're at and, you know, walk in memory of their loved ones who are either living with Alzheimer's or who had lived with Alzheimer's and, and since passed. Um, they're going to be able to uh, raise awareness, you know, utilizing social media and things like that. There's a lot of things planned around that. But um, we've been part, uh, at Home Instead, we've been part of the committee that organizes those walks year after year for so many years. I, I've been with the company around 10 years now, and every year that I've been with the company, we've been doing this. And, uh, but a special fundraiser. Wow. We're mm -hmm. kind of, we're doing something that's a little groundbreaking, which is not uh, out of the norm. A lot of people are doing groundbreaking things right now. People are getting very creative. Yeah. Yeah. That's a silver mm -hmm. lining of, of this whole era. And um, <laughs> so look at that. We're starting to call it an era because it's going on Dang. so long. Yeah. It's yeah. like, it is an era. <laughs> Absolutely. And so we're doing uh an online event that is a variety show. We're calling it the End Alzheimer's New Mexico Variety Show. And depending upon when this show comes out, um, hopefully folks will have time to log on uh, and, and check it out. It's going to be on Thursday, September 24th in the evening at 7 p.m. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be awesome. There's gonna be comedy, music, uh, dance performance. Uh, I've taken a lot of this, uh, of, of the compilation of the, the event onto my own plate and I'm having all sorts of fun going around and filming, you know, of social distancing, of course, but filming flamenco dancers and hula dancers and comedians and just, uh, it's going to be a really special thing. I hope that a lot of people are able to log on. We can raise some awareness around Alzheimer's and dementia how it affects New Mexicans in particular, and mm -hmm. um, and hopefully raise mm -hmm. some money, you know, because the Alzheimer's Association is the third largest contributor to research to end Alzheimer's in the world. And they're only third in, um, in reference to the United States government and the Chinese government. Beyond that, it's the Alzheimer's Association that contributes the most funds toward research in the world. And so, um, we need to continue to support that if we want to see headway made in the area of Alzheimer's research. Yeah, yeah. So, so who knew who knew there were hula dancers in Santa Fe? <laughs> I've known for I several mean... years. That goes way back <laughs> to me because um, it, it's not because of like you know hula dancing being uh, you know a specific passion of mine. Um, I mean, I, I enjoy it as much as anybody, but. Um, it uh, goes back to my years spent in, uh, in ministry, being a pastor at a church here in town. I knew of this group that, uh, of, of lovely ladies that uh, do hula dancing as a ministry. They'll, they'll take the dancing to hospitals and all sorts of, you know, out of the box places. And it's very, very cool. Like the music that they dance to and how they do it, it's I can see how it could be really therapeutic and really helpful for people. That's so cool. Yeah. That's so cool. Well, and flamenco is classic Santa Fe uh, deal. What uh, you said, comedians? How many? How many acts have you got? I think. Well, so the the show's only an hour long, um, and I think you know we're we're cramming probably like seven acts during that hour. You know, and then there's going to be, you know, lots of, you know, information for people around Alzheimer's and dementia. We're not going to overload it with that. We're going to try and keep it light. Um, but uh, so there'll be lots of opportunities for people to to chime in and, and donate if they're able to do that. Um, beyond that, there's also going to be a special tribute that um, I'm involved with. Well, <laughs> I'm involved with a lot of it, but <laughs> like there's um, m one of the musical projects that I've, you know, been part of since way back in the, the early 2000s. Um, we are 
taking a, a cover version that we did of a song um, from one of the bands that we're really influenced by. And it's, it's, it's a really great song that fits well with a tribute that we're gonna be doing, where we're gonna be taking pictures and video of people and their loved ones who are living with the effects of Alzheimer's. And we're going to put that into the, the music video as a special tribute. And so I'm excited about seeing that. Wow. Yeah. So like seven acts, it's an hour long. And where, where is it? Where, how do people Yeah. So, um, plug in? People are going to, it's going to be on the main page of the Santa Fe, New Mexican website. So the, okay. um, that that's one place that they're going to be able to see it. Um, they'll also be able to, to see it shared to social media resources, like uh, pages, like, like Home Instead's page. Um, but, um, I guess the, the best way to, if, if you search Home Instead Santa Fe on like Facebook or whatever, you'll see in our recent posts that we've shared the event, you can click reminders on Eventbrite. Um, we're going to be getting the word out really heavily over the next week to two weeks before the event. So, um, I think that it'll be hard probably for folks to not see it if they're interested, but if they well, search. I'm thinking that, this is like next week. It is right. Yeah, it is. Don't remind Already. me. Already. Oh, that's, that's stressing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I mean, yeah, when you set the date, I started doing some math here in my yeah, head yeah, and yeah. this is like next week and then September's over. Right. Stop it. Good. Stop it. Wow. I don't know what's happening here. So you're actually part of one of the acts. I am. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. One of my mm -hmm. old, um, the, the style of music we used to play. And I, it's like, it's kind of like a, we haven't done a lot with this, with this act since the early 2000s. Um, and it's like my old uh, punk pop roots you know where it punk. Was, yeah but punk it's not, and pop okay it, it's like the the song that we're doing for this is 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 more acoustic flavor you know and it's it's something that we recorded during this covid era we recorded it you know all separate in our homes you know our bass players in las vegas nevada a guitar player and drummer live in albuquerque i'm up here in santa fe we all recorded our individual parts and did the video to it and then I just put it all together. So we didn't, we weren't even in the same room at any point. That but. is so cool. I have been so just like my mind, mind blown by these music videos that I see where people are everywhere and they bring it, bring all the voices together. It's yeah. just so, it's so wonderful. It's so wonderful. I think that we as so. human beings, like, w I mean, of course, you know, connection to one another is something that we, well, I, I was going to, well, I was going to go real deep there, but like connection to one another is something that's always there, but we crave feeling it. We crave experiencing it. And during mm -hmm. times like these, it's very, very cool, like you're saying, to see the creative nature of people thinking outside of the box and using the technology that's at our disposal to create that feeling of connection. Yeah. Because like, if we didn't have, I mean, I think if we didn't have this technology that we have, we probably would be figuring out different things. You know, if it was in the early 2000s or the late 90s that we were experiencing this, it would be different. Um, there would probably be, you know, news stories of people gathering together, or, you know, you know, on different sides of the street and talking to each other or something. You know, like, <laughs> like, but instead, we have this we have this technology where we can see each other and we can visit. And yeah, it's really saved our lives, I think. And you uniquely in touch with that, I think, because of your occupation and your understanding of how we process things emotionally and how that affects us. Like, and my work would not have been possible to continue through this time without the technology. Or it would be possible. significantly hindered, right? I mean, like if you were over the phone, 
you'd be able to have conversations with people, but how much more valuable is it to see their facial expressions? Well, and in fact, I have several clients that I do, uh, we, we are on the phone. It, it's really up to them. You know, I don't know if I said it to you or not, but I often say, people who are tuning into this show every time are gonna hear me say this more than once, that BC, I would have said to you, no, 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 I'm not, do I'm not doing therapy that way. Uh -uh. No, I'm an in-person person. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I am. But this, this era has uh, enlarged my vision of what therapy can be exponentially. I can, we can do Zoom. We can do a phone call. We can text. Man, whatever you got, whatever makes you feel safe, that's how we're, that's how we're gonna roll because that's really what therapy is about is safety. And I, in fact, have clients that I highly suspect will not return to the office anytime in the, in the foreseeable future, if at all. And it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. I don't want to do my work that uh, virtually forever or, or completely that way. But I know that I know what is possible now. Yeah. And, and that's safe, really safe grown to... my, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, you no, know no. what's possible mm. now. Like, I mean, safety is one thing you mentioned, but then I also think just convenience too. I think that there's several different types of interactions with people that are going to continue to utilize this video platform just because of convenience. Mm -hmm. Like if I'm going to, if I need to, to meet with you for whatever reason um, and driving across town doesn't look like it's going to work that day, let's just hop on Zoom. Right. Right, exactly. Whereas yeah. before this old COVID era, it had been like, you want to do a FaceTime instead of getting together? That's kind of weird. We live in the same town. What's up? Exactly. But it, <laughs> it's just, I mean, it is very easy. Like how quick, you know, like, I mean, obviously it could be unhealthy if you're just trying to see how many pos meetings you can possibly have in a day. But I right. mean, you, you could definitely... <laughs> make it to more places a lot quicker if you're doing it this way. Right. Right. Now the, now the, the sort of shadow side of it is I, what, I mean, I don't feel, I don't feel like I'm missing anything, but I don't do, I don't do extracurricular stuff on zoom. Like very little of that. Very little. I kind of know my, my level of tolerance. Mm -hmm. I'm not interested in going to any more like meetings than I have to on Zoom <laughs> or whatever oh. you want to call it, <laughs> my little helper here. <laughs> and I, I don't want to get my entertainment that way either. So, well, so for, I don't go to, I don't go to church online. I don't, mm. I don't. And I, and I'm good with that. I'm good with that. So. I, what I'm trying to say, I think, is that I, I, most of my, the media time is reserved for my clients and uh, my really, really close relationships. And after that, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, certain, there's a certain type of fatigue that we're kind of running into as a culture you're hearing a lot of people talk about. That mm -hmm. comes from, I think, the overload of, of looking at a screen and trying to interact mm -hmm. with, with people that way. But it's also, that's mm -hmm. probably just a hurdle that, uh, or a growing pain, maybe you could call it. Like, I think that it's something that, you know, depending upon, you know, for, for some people, this is going to be the safest way to interact for a while. Right. Uh, um, like, it's already been a while, but <laughs> it's good. It is an era after yeah. all. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, you said just go ahead. Go ahead. No, you said earlier when you started kind of started down this this trail, you said you stopped and you said, Oh, I was gonna go really deep there. I want to know where you were going. Oh, I kinda ended That's up saying always it. interesting to me. I ended up saying it. Like it was just that, you know, <laughs> like 
it was it was one you know very small comment but that it was a like that i i feel in a deep way you know that like we i was talking about us craving connection with one another but i feel like you know we're craving something that's already there you know like we're we're never without connection i think it i think that we can tell ourselves a story you know that we're not we're not connected to everything that we need you know but i i think that um I think I, I'm going really deep. It's it's all one thing, you know. It, it's all one thing that's happening here, you know. And and uh, I think that to feel disconnected is the illusion. Wow! I think you have to say more about that. Well, I mean, asking me to say more about that could be asking me to say a bunch of things that are not going to really make sense to most people other than me. But um, I, I just, I guess that's, that's probably come of the realization, uh, the realizations that, that are brought about by taking time for, for real introspection. And, you know, when, you start to see that so many of the the things in our lives that are perceived by us to be our greatest problems have to do with 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 thoughts and storylines that are complete fabrications that don't really have much root in reality you know the i i could and and so much of our lives i think are um are caught up in those narratives that we have in our mind mm -hmm. that we mm -hmm. haven't that, that that at times you know we haven't developed the mental muscle or the the uh, you know the the habitual ability to be introspective and see what's really going on rather than just be caught up in it. I think seeing what's going on and being caught up in what's going on in our lives are two dramatically different things. Ah. And, mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. I, I think that, you know, loneliness and disconnection and those types of things I mean, there's certainly, there's tangible, um, there's, there's real, um, there's, what am I trying to say here? There's, there, there are certainly real aspects to loneliness. You know, someone who's alone all the time starts to feel the effects of being alone. Um, but I do feel that the way in which we process those experiences in our minds has a lot more to do with um, it, it. It's it's a it's a see see. I'm starting to even confuse myself, but <laughs> uh, um, but I I just think our circumstances themselves really don't warrant the desperation that we oftentimes feel over them. Ah, I, I think well, that's, that's what I'm here for. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if that made sense that's to anybody, if it didn't make sense to anybody, it's completely fine with me. Like, I, like it's, it's, it's totally. No, I'm hearing you. And I, a lot of the work that I do is about, is about uh, encouraging people to explore the idea of being their own best friend. Mm. because that's that's where i mean that's the first connection is to ourselves yeah yeah and um if we feel disconnected from ourselves well that's that's the place where we can begin to work that's one place we can begin to work um i think yeah it has to start there right I mean, because mm -hmm how we relate to ourselves is so intertwined with how we relate to other people. 
like everything about how you relate to another person has everything to do with how you relate to yourself. If you, exactly. if you are a harsh person with yourself, don't be surprised that you're harsh with other people. Mm -hmm. and, and like everything mm -hmm. that we see in other people is interpreted by what we've experienced within ourselves. Right. It's right. a part of it. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think that, you know, the things that we struggle the most with in other people are the things that we're hardest on ourselves about. And, and when we start to, you know, if we can work toward being our own best friend, like, I think that, I think that, you know, working toward being our own best friend has a lot to do with forgiving ourselves and being patient with ourselves and loving ourselves. And then what inevitably starts to happen is that you start being patient with other people and right. you start being it, it more forgiving with other people. back out. And you start loving other back people out. more. Right. Um, but I, I, I do. Self-compassion like is a big one. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm sorry. What were you going to say? No, that was very, that was a very valuable point. You got to give it time to breathe. Um, but I was, I was just going to, to say that I think the, the work of introspection, you know, whether it comes like, I mean, the practice that I know of would be meditation, you know, mindfulness meditation to actually um, to take a few minutes a day, you know, I'm, I've fallen off the wagon recently. So, I mean, I need to, to, to practice more consistently. Um, not because, you know, I'm not chastising myself. I need to practice more consistently just to practice. Okay. Not chastising part things. That's not allowed. Yeah. That's just not the, allowed on MT radio. The, <laughs> just the sheer, <laughs> for the sheer benefit for the sheer benefit of being able to see what's going on inside of me rather than be caught up in it and owned by it. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's dramatic. It's a super, it's a superpower when you stumble upon it for the first time that you realize that, you know, emotions arise, but you need not be owned by them, you know, and well said, yeah. Well said. Yes. But the first and, time, it, it doesn't make sense until you experience it. I think. I think that mm -hmm. that's that's you know some. I think that you need to take a step of faith a bit, you know, to to try and develop a practice that would help you to experience that type of thing, and mm -hmm. then you'll understand the value of it. Like, because it wasn't until I spent a good amount of time. It took me a long time, which probably means I'm just not that great of a of a meditator, you know, <laughs> like and, and you know naturally. You know, I don't know if anybody is or not. No, I wouldn't say I no, I wouldn't say that at all. But my my experience though was that it it took me quite a while of, you know, initially like sitting to meditate and taking, you know, five minutes, taking ten minutes just to sit and and watch my breath and begin to see how my distractions come and how I get carried away from what I'm focusing on and then recognize that. And not judging it, not judging myself that I got distracted mm -hmm. from what I was doing, but then just mm -hmm. returning back to the breath, you know, as boring as that sounds, <laughs> as weird as it might sound to some, it's just so valuable because every time you recognize that you get distracted and then you see it, because you, because you have that, you have that task that you're trying to do, you know, I'm trying to pay attention to my breath for five minutes. I'm just going to watch it go in and watch it go out and watch it go in. And then now I'm thinking about what's for lunch. And then now I'm thinking about that thing with my kid. <laughs> and now I'm thinking about all the emails I need to send later. And now I'm thinking about, you know, my childhood and how crazy it was. And then now I'm thinking about, you know, like it, it just goes all over the place, you know? And, right. and right. the amazing thing that happens is you begin to actually notice how that is going on all day long. Mm -hmm. those those mm -hmm. those thoughts are just carrying you from place to place all day long and then you're every time you recognize what's happening and you go back to that thing that simple practice of watching the breath it's like you're you're doing a mental push-up 
you know, and then you're actually mm -hmm. getting stronger at your ability to see how your mind gets carried away. And then, right. Mm -hmm. and, and then after mm -hmm. a while, you know, like I remember, you know, after doing that for a while, um, I would, you know, cause my temper can flare up, you know, pretty bad sometimes. And I can react to situations pretty, you know, pretty dramatically, like just be really thrown off. And, you know, that would happen, you know, like my, my you know, my, my kiddo would do something and it would freak me out, you know, and I'd be like, Hey, wait. And then, and then I just like kind of watch it fall off. Mm -hmm. Like there's, there's something that happens like with, with emotions that arise, even powerful ones like anger or, or, um, or anxiety or, um, you know, emotions. Right. Right. The bajillion of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and when they, when they arise, they, uh, you, you can't stay angry unless you work at it. Like you, you, wow. you, you can't actually mm -hmm. stay angry and, unless you continually manufacture and relive that thought about that thing that that person mm -hmm. did to you that is making mm -hmm. you angry and you're rehashing, mm -hmm. rehashing and rehashing and rehashing. Mm -hmm. That's what you have to do to stay angry. And you don't realize that until you see that, uh, you know, if, if you just kind of let the thought go and it goes to wherever it goes. Right, you right. Don't have to be angry. Right. So I, I have a premise that I, I, I invite my clients to do is because the idea of meditation is your, even five minutes sometimes can seem too big and too overwhelming. And so the idea that I offer is that it, if at any point in your day, you can give yourself, if you can pause, just a pause, just a moment is a, is a start and it's significant yeah. Yeah. because if you pause, you're not running on remote control, right? And so if you just, if you just pause, it's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like just like, you know, when you're walking from your car to your office, if you can remember even once a day, just to feel how the bottom of your feet feel. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. How they feel on the ground. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But any moment, any moment of a pause can get you out of your head and into your body and if you if you start giving yourself those opportunities it will it will it'll happen more it'll happen more and you'll build your muscle like you're saying but it's one of those things about which i say any is good mm -hmm. any is good yep any time you can give yourself the opportunity to pause and so i i say that to you because you're saying that you haven't been meditating like you would like to be yeah, yeah. But I would expect you are experience you are pausing because you already have that muscle. Yeah, yeah. I just I I, I just um it's something I'm I'm super, you know, passionate about. But it's funny how sometimes the things that we're really passionate about can also be things that we can procrastinate about. Oh, find the most reasons to resist. Yeah. I am totally you're with you on that. Totally with you on that. Yeah. But I just, I love, you know, when that, when that muscle, you know, in the times in my life, when that muscle has been the strongest have certainly been the most healthy times in my life mm. where I'm, mm. I'm, I'm much, I'm probably much more pleasant to be around for others. And I'm certainly much more pleasant to be around for myself. And I'm always mm. around myself. So the more, I can, <laughs> the more I can make that happen, the better. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, and so it's an essential point. I said it earlier, but I want to reemphasize that is essential component of being your own best friend is that self-compassion mm -hmm. and kindness. I also say that to my clients, you know, 
find it if you can find and find a way to be kind to yourself yeah. this week that would be really great that would be so great and we don't say should and we don't say ought yeah that's it would good. just be really good it would just be really good mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's good stuff i mean even talking about these things I think is is so helpful for me because um, there's a certain there's a certain aspect to having conversations around what it is to observe our thoughts and our lives from a vantage point of not judging of just being open to what's happening and you know also being open to see what we're adding to what's happening that's not necessary and not helpful and not real you know like like revisiting those concepts having experienced those things at different times i could just talk about this stuff forever because like as i'm talking about it i'm living it like like it's a like, when when it when the thoughts are are, co are coming through and, and coming out of my mouth and being expressed i am you know reacquainting myself with ah, the, you know, mm -hmm. like it's an exercise in and of itself i think like yeah uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't i was really never and i i i feel like there's there's so much more that i that i that i can accomplish on this front you know of being connected to my body and like my my lived experience in this world in a tangible sense rather than in a conceptual sense alone Mm -hmm. like, but um but but a few years ago i remember earlier on in the practice of, of of trying to to do these things that i realized i was so disconnected from my body like so disconnected like i remember sitting in this very room in, in a chair in here you know meditating and i felt like i feel like it's the first time i felt my lips touching one another Mm -hmm. like it was just it was it's it was that dramatic it was like mm -hmm. it was, I feel like it's the first time I felt my feet on the floor you know like it, yeah I was, I was so in my head when it came to how I was relating to my life mm -hmm. that I don't know if I was really living it ah uh, wow that's a whew, that's a <laughs> Mm. But you know, um, we're living it as best we know. Mm -hmm. And when you look back, you can see a real difference between then and now. Right? You mean uh, like when I look back to like at that point? Or when you look, yeah, if you look back, like, like if I look back a certain distance, I don't even recognize that person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If I look back at myself, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't even recognize that person. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I've had that, that experience too, where it, it seems like, you know, there, there is, a, there is like a, a, a narrative that we carry of our lives of you know that that includes you know the whole span as best we can grasp it at this point mm -hmm. you know um but it does certainly feel like you know like i drive by like a place that i used to live you know 20 years ago or i um you know i, I drive by my elementary school or, or something like that or i think mm -hmm. of uh, a time where i was in a different career and it definitely has like my my lived experience is almost as if that was a different person or a different lifetime like it was mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. but um i don't know if that has to do with you know rejecting things or eras of my past or if it just has to do with you know being in touch with the fact that impermanence is is real you know that's a that's that's our lived experience you know, and 
the and and yesterday is as dead and gone as Abraham Lincoln. It is gone. The mm-hmm. only thing that's happening right now is now. And and <laughs> and like and not I, I think that like sometimes thinking about that concept can be uncomfortable for people because mm-hmm. we have this we have this desire for whatever reason to hold on to pieces of our lives and that's an impossible task and so um it definitely flies in the face of that desire when it comes to holding on to pieces of eras of our lives as though we can carry them with us in some way uh, because Mm -hmm. we can't we can't like all we can ever have and experience is what's happening right now and I think that getting in touch with that to a place where you can experience the beauty of it, the beauty of the change, the beauty of the evolution, the beauty of the, um, the of the impermanence of the uh, of our experience, and accept that, like it's very freeing. I, I think that like to the degree that we can grasp and accept that experience in our lives is the degree to which we can experience dramatic freedom and, and, and really not be attached to things that we're never going to be able to hold on to anyway. Mm. Wow. Well, I think it also has to do with, uh, with, with growth. So, and with, uh, you know, that peeling off of the layers of the things that we have, the armor that we have put on from a very early time in order to survive in the world and the world in which we grew up in. And so as we're able to uh, partake of this introspection, to grow, find, f- find ways to grow, I feel like that we're growing into that person that we, we, that we, that we always have been, but that, w- that we had to protect for whatever reason. Um, and there's so many reasons, traumas and, and difficulties. Uh, that cause us to put on those those armors to s- yeah. survive in the world, and as we're able to peel them off, we get to see that person that was originally meant to be, mm. to be fully ourselves. And I think that whatever 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 tradition, religious tradition, um, uh, person is uh, uh, has. Yeah. I think you can still tie, you can still uh, resonate to the idea that a person fully alive, the glory of God is the person fully alive. Mm. And to be fully alive is to find the fullest expression of yourself. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, when you look back, and you know, like, I don't know who that person is. Well, let me introduce you to Ken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good stuff. Yeah. yeah. So you wanted to go deep. We did. We went deep. <laughs> right. 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 This is great conversation. Yeah. Um, you feel like that's enough deep conversation for today? I don't even know what time it is. <laughs> um, it's like, it's about 1230. I, I feel great. I feel great. I, I, I think feel that, like that, uh, that this you know, is good. Mm-hmm, yeah, we, we touched on some really cool stuff. I, I feel like, uh, I mean, that's right in the sweet spot, you know, for, mm-hmm. for your, um, I, I really like your um, 
this this is the type of conversation that needs to be had on your platform. I think that like that's mm-hmm. what it's for, you know. Um, mm-hmm. And it just happened organically. I didn't know what we were going to talk about today. So right, yeah. right. I love it. I love it like that. I love it like that. I love the the organicness of it, the imperfection of it. Uh, yeah, it's so great. It's so great. Thanks for joining us on MJ Radio. We'll see you next time. I know one thing. I love my house. It's just home, and I love it. For over 25 years, Home Instead has helped seniors stay home. Now, staying home isn't just staying in the place they love. It's staying safe. It's essential. If your loved one needs in-home care, we're here to help. Home Instead. To us, it's personal.